we're live. All right, so... Um... Hello, everyone. Which, which Hello. Is no one so far, I guess. <laughs> yeah, it's the first seconds. They're always like that. Yeah, of course. Uh, so, uh, have you been trying any good food recently, Eugene? Food? <laughs> okay. That was unexpected. Uh, <laughs> no, no. no just, uh, uh, honestly, um, lately, since the current situation here, uh, I've been... Um, uh, ordering a lot of food, you know, for, by home delivery. And uh, for some reason, I had bad luck lately. They either uh, delivered the wrong thing, forgot to deliver something. And there was uh, recently, like last week, I got a, a, a bag. They always put them in paper bags, all the food. And I had some very, very cool burgers with uh, two glass bottles of Coke. And uh, the, the paper bag, it was like damaged at the bottom or something. It was wet. And then when I was carrying the, the bag, one bottle fell out and just shattered on the floor. Okay. And I was so upset. I was so pissed because it was like partially their fault, but also mine because I was not careful. It's the, the paper bag was just overpacked with heavy food. Yeah, so next time I'll need to keep in mind not to order that much. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you're just eating too much. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. true. I'm not gonna lie. I have put on a bit of weight lately. So, but honestly, I'm not too strict about that with myself. Yeah, I but, think you know, Eugene, have... Eugene, do you, do you like pasta? Unfortunately, I love it. Yes. <laughs> but why unfortunately? I'm, <laughs> I'm... Yeah, I'm, because I'm trying to hold back, you know, and not eat it too often. Right. And even now, it's uh, kind of worse because I'm surrounded by pasta experts lately so, oh, yeah, <laughs> so. yeah well, exactly i was uh when i was preparing for this for this chat um i googled flesh god apocalypse and entered wikipedia, mm. wikipedia and there's a curious thing there that you, uh, I, I checked uh like five minutes ago and it's not there anymore but uh in like 2012 or something like that there was they, they were offering pasta they had like three types of pasta <laughs> that, yeah are I you aware so. of that yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I i do remember because we were streaming with the guys uh last week or two weeks ago i don't remember and some some of the the people in the comments were asking when are you guys bringing back the pasta to the merch store <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> which is uh weird but like you know they are trying to promote their culture which is i think super awesome it's something that helps them to stand out I imagine like you know like the, the stuff they sing about okay it's a different topic but they're still italians Im imagine you guys are the the polish pirates selling pierogi <laughs> in the merch store <laughs> you know? how cool would be that <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, pirates were, uh, after all, well, were well known for uh, eating lots of pierogi. So of yeah, course. yeah, yeah, yeah. Polish pirates. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Definitely. Anyway, for those of you who don't know, uh, tonight we're uh, hosting a, a Q and A session with our good friend Eugene. Eugene, uh, for those of you that don't know, is an amazing drummer. He is known for his work with bands such as Decapitated, uh, Vital Remains. Um, Belphegor and uh, recently Flash God Apocalypse. So he's quite an accomplished musician and he's with us because last year uh, he has helped us um, with our live shows. He, on a very short notice, joined us and played a few shows with us for which we are really grateful and we'll get back to that. But I'd like to um, begin uh, with uh, Eugene, tell us just a few things. Uh, about how we met, actually. Do you remember? Oh, that was very cool. Yeah, that was pretty interesting. Uh, I uh, I was uh, doing two weekend shows with Decapitated. That was, I think, Germany, Pol Poland. End of July. I don't remember the exact dates, but it was end of July. And on my way home from the last Polish show, we were going to Krakow, where the Decapitated guys are based. And it, it, I was, we were literally in the van on the road when I got a, a text message, uh, it was like an offer to, to do the, these two gigs with you, which was insane because it was supposed to happen in a few days. Vakin was like um, the 3rd of August or something. I don't remember. Like, begin. 
maybe four or five days from 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 that day and it's like okay uh, 12 songs uh, or no we didn't we play 12 songs was it 12 songs something like that one hour one hour oh my gosh. god i don't, yeah, I don't it know was. I don't remember and, uh, how many songs it was. And, and I literally, like, the whole deal, the whole offer, let's say, the whole um, uh, c collaboration went down via phone in the van going back home to Krakow from the decapitated show. And luckily, I remember, I was like, hey, th that seems like a good idea because the guys are just going to drop me off in Krakow. So instead of taking the bus home to Vienna, I'm just going to stay in Krakow, rehearse with the Vane guys, and then just... Go on, you know, why not? And the, the only thing that I remember that I was like thinking about, okay, I, the only uh, problem I need to solve is laundry. So, <laughs> and uh, yeah, I just need to wash my clothes because I packed for two gigs and now we're going to have one more week or maybe a bit more. So that, that was very, very yeah, cool. Maybe, and, maybe uh, a bit more, exactly. <laughs> yeah, and then, and, then, and then I remember just like uh, you sent me a link or it was like a Spotify link or something with all the songs, the 12 songs. And I just started learning all that stuff in the, in the van. Like I was like listening to it nonstop, listening, listening, listening. I remember, I think I was listening for six hours on that day. And then I was like memorizing the structures. It was like re some, some of that stuff was pretty complicated. Some of it was simple. And then literally without any practice, we, we, were, we were supposed to already go and jam together. And uh, we had maybe three days or something. To I had three days to to learn how to play drums <laughs> again for all that stuff and two days. two days yeah yeah crazy crazy and uh, and yeah and then then you were like always surprising me with that stuff like yeah you know you heard the songs that we sent you but live we do stuff differently and then there was the scooter thing and then you have to like sing with the crowd and I was like oh my god like what how is <laughs> this is gonna be a disaster. <laughs> And then, yeah, but like, luckily, I think everything went smoothly, and all yeah, the yeah. all the guys were very, very helpful. You know, like with all the stuff, it was like super. I was, I, I maybe you didn't know back then, but I was shitting my pants. I was so nervous. <laughs> <laughs> really, like, you didn't, like you didn't look like. <laughs> yeah, the the, va the Vakan show, you know, the Vakan battle show, and then and then when we arrived there, yeah, we like there was so much stress going on with like all this changeover and stuff and i was like yeah let's just let's just hope we're gonna play everything and it's gonna be fine yeah it was it was crazy but it was so cool i it's like one of uh it's a very unique experience i've never had before so thank you do you do you remember do you remember when uh just before the show uh, before uh Wacken, uh show uh it turned out that you know the in-ear monitoring system will oh, not yeah. be oh, yeah. working for us so we had to I think I was playing with with a click, uh, yeah. but, and no one else was uh, was uh, having the click except for you, of course. Uh, <laughs> we were just before show. We we're you know, we took a look at the set list and okay. So how are we going to you know hi hat that? <laughs> it was <laughs> yeah, that was like one of the coolest things that that uh, that I had to experience with you guys is uh, the whole. Um, system the the gear system the in-ear stuff that you're using that was so cool during the rehearsals it's like everybody's hearing everything perfectly it's so awesome then you go on stage yeah. it's the same level of comfort except, I mean, except, for me, except live <laughs> yeah well that, that was different yeah. yeah i mean for me it's a little bit uh it's not that special because i always uh, play with in-ears and uh, anyway but like it was so cool i was like ah yeah that was that was probably the only thing that kept the hope you know in me that it's going to be fine because everybody's comfortable we cannot we cannot mess this up yeah and then and then the guy says like ah yeah no in-ears because some whatever frequency stuff it's it's not allowed in germany and i don't know yeah and then and i'm like oh my god and then we have to like relearn everything that we have to count in because we never count in with everybody has the click track so we don't need to count in we we have the same thing with flash god apocalypse we have no count ins at all and now imagine we go to vak and they said like no count in oh, like no in ears radio in ears and then i have to count in everything and and then i like if Weird. if you know those those three days of stress were not enough for me to like i'm not even sure which song is which like what what is this that <laughs> song that i'm and then then the like the, the stage guy says like yeah and now nobody has the click so yeah and and also i remember we brought all the hardware all the stands and i said like uh, can I, i put all the symbols you know and we got to prepare it and then we're just gonna swap it one second and he was super stubborn he said like no 
you're not gonna like take away your stupid stands. We're not gonna do it. We're not gonna move anything on the stage. Trust me, it's gonna be faster if we, you just swap the symbols. And I was like, okay, you know, I don't, I don't wanna, I don't wanna start a fight here because like let's just let's just pray we're gonna survive it. And then and then somehow we did, and and it was cool, and it was awesome, and the crowd was crazy, and it I think it was a success. Yeah. I think yeah, it was. We, yeah. we all were actually shitting our pants uh, at that yeah. time. I was nervous as hell. I, I was so nervous I forgot to change the strings uh, in my guitar. That's why I broke, broke a string halfway through oh, the yeah. second song of the set. I remember us talking after the show and you said, like, hey, I was expecting you to come over to the drums and everything. Is, Dude, yeah. I was stuck to the to the monitors on the stage because otherwise I wouldn't hear anything. It was, uh, yeah. Yeah, it was, it was terrible. And uh, people don't know this, but uh, when we were rehearsing, it was actually just you and me. Uh, it was oh yeah, band, yeah. Was... yeah. I, I, did did we ever have a full band rehearsal? No. Uh oh. On, only <laughs> the two shows. shows at the show. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I think it was it was just you and Robert. Yeah. Uh, practicing. Yeah, yeah. I was I was at the seaside with family and came directly uh, to Good the show you. basically. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so then we met. <laughs> and I remember when we started um, because I, I for some reason I didn't have drums in my uh, in in my uh, earphones. Really? Okay. Yeah, and uh, and we, st we start the, the the gig and it it is supposed to be some drums <laughs> at the beginning and the stage was large so it was it wasn't you know uh, it, was, it was very hard to hear just like that uh, and yeah I was. I was then I was oh shit that's my first seconds with you and there are no drums where they are supposed to be what is going on <laughs> and, and it's uh yeah I, I don't know which video we published but uh we because we were, we were allowed to publish just one video uh but yeah there's it's recorded that we I will I'm just like traveling to you and oh, are you playing oh yeah you're playing good it's my monitoring system just you know isn't working properly so yeah yeah they, they it was abandoned that. It, it was it was very stressful very stressful yeah 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 all right all righty then um and uh well uh, while we're on topic of, of playing live you you mentioned uh, flash god how did you actually end up in flash god apocalypse uh, that's a, a very simple uh, story. Uh, the thing is, um, it all all started like two, maybe in two thousand eighteen. I I was like, I'm always tr recording like random videos, like doing drum covers and stuff. I do that mostly to uh, stay in shape. I mean, like while drumming. B back when I started like doing recording myself doing videos, I did that to promote myself, kind of have some kind of following, you know, reach out and uh, uh, have something to show to the world that, hey, guys, I can do this, check it out, whatever. And yeah. then later, I was trying to, like, challenge myself with harder and harder stuff. So, like, I wanted to get, get better and better in order to, like, let's say if I get some kind of uh, important whatever gig that where I have like a lot of responsibilities and it's some like, let's say extreme drumming, whatever complicated stuff, then uh, my level is kind of like level of skills is higher than what I'm required to do. So I can kind of hold back and, you know, stay relaxed. I don't have to always perform at my limit. And uh, because th this was like kind of the case with Vital Remains in 2016, when I first joined with like, like I got the offer, I was like, no way, there's no way I can do it. It's like, it's insane. It's just so brutal fast there's no way i can do it and then somehow i did you know for in the beginning it was very tough and i was like i was nah all the time and then like in the end after we did like around 50 gigs like a few last shows that we did were like super cool like and i and i saw the huge difference in my playing so i was getting used you know but this being always at the limit of your abilities is very tough so i was trying to always like push that boundary you know so i have some how do they say it headroom whatever you know so like every, everything that you do is easier so and then and then i was like at some point i did a poll on uh, social media that i said like okay guys um 
Uh, how about you gonna just suggest me something to record? What would you like to see? And I'm gonna pick like the top ten songs. And of course, when I when I before even suggesting that, I was sure that there's gonna be this the violation by Flash God Apocalypse, their most infamous song, so to say. And I knew that people are gonna ask that, and I knew that I'll have to do it. I really didn't want to do it. And that one won the first place by votes like like far ahead you know so like so many people wanted that song and i like okay well whatever what can i do so i i recorded it it was uh, very very tough i remember like it it was really really hard and i did everything like single strokes one foot blast because i knew that people want to see me play it they want to see me do it like that like this kind of old school way whatever not the way like using double strokes and stuff so whatever i did that and i think it was published in October, no, November 2018. And um, in January, which is two months later, I got a message from Francesco from Pledge God who said that like, oh yeah, he, he first, I think, first just wrote like, oh, that, that was pretty cool, like, like cool skills, you know, and stuff. And then later he messaged me and said like, hey, maybe you would be interested at some point in the future. He like didn't, didn't specify anything, but said like, think about it. And I said like, yeah, sure, sure. I'll think about it. And then uh, basically it was, uh, it was kind of funny because like the, the offer came that the, like, if I want to join them after, uh, on the day after the Vakken show with you. <laughs> All right. That was that was uh, 3rd of August, I think. So and uh, and I got a call. He said, like, well, I'm back and uh, I wanted to uh, suggest to you, like, what, what do you think about this? And like, if you'd be interested. And that was the time when I had to decide. And honestly, it was uh, like I had those uh, Vietnam flashbacks from the Vital Remains offer. The same thing. Like when, when I remember in August when Francesco called and said, do you want to join us? And I said, like, no way, I cannot do it. I cannot do it because, like, it's I'm I'm not at that level yet. So no. And and then I was like thinking about that time, 2016, when I was so afraid that like this is going to be very challenging, and uh, I'm not sure if I can do it. So that thought, that memory, made me decide to do it for sure. I said, like, I know that this is going to be tough, but that's exactly the reason why I should do it. So I said yes, and yeah, and that's it. So and and the, the first time first time we rehearsed and we started to have gigs was February this year. So okay. And uh, while we're on topic of uh, your live covers, what's the story with um, Fear Factory and uh, <laughs> <laughs> and their cover? Yeah, that, that was like a, that was a stupidly funny situation. The thing is, uh, like, uh, there's um. A lot of people like all uh, like there are a lot of people on internet you know who talk different things they're like they like to be offensive they like to talk shit and get away with that yeah. because they can you know nobody can everybody's a hero behind the keyboard so and like a lot of people always like ask me like oh can you do this and can you do that and like uh, there are just too many requests i wish i could have the time to do all of that stuff you know and uh, then there was a there was like I think the, the 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 song that I did was a slave labor, and uh, there were like some random people like commenting, yeah, cool, yeah, awesome. And one guy said like, do power shifter, and that's um that's like a 212 BPM song, which is considered to be re relatively slow in comparison to what I do. And for some reason, there was Fear Factory's official account replying to that guy's comment, like, oh. I bet he cannot, Eugene cannot do it because like that's way too fast for him and, and stuff like this. And I'm like, okay, I mean like, yeah, people talk different stuff. So probably if you're, I'm sure that Fear Factory has no idea who I am and it's cool, you know, like I don't, I don't, I don't need them to know or whatever. So, and then it was funny, you know, and then they're like, they're, there were a lot of comments and I see like, this is weird. Why is Fear Factory always commenting? This is like, a little bit childish to me. I mean, this is Fear Factor. It's a huge band. You know why? Why they take the time to respond? And then apparently, some people said it might be Dino himself. I don't know. Probably yes. Apparently, uh, because like th this whole situation then continued with like a lot of a lot of fights in the comments, which I I, I tried to avoid. You know, I try not to be a part of 
because this is not really my fight. And uh, usually I, I don't uh, take these kind of, ch it's, not, it's not about challenging, it's not like somebody wants to challenge me, whatever, you know, this is like not ancient Rome or whatever. So, you know, like music. And, and then I was like, okay, but this is like Fear Factory, the official account is like trying to kind of like, no, oh, whatever, whatever. They want to see what I can do or whatever. And I know that the people who follow me, they saw I did Aborted, I did Benighted, I did Flash, Flash God Apocalypse. All that stuff is insane in comparison to Power Shifter. And then I said, okay, well, I'm, I'm going to do Power Shifter. But this is like a very rare exception that I accepted that challenge, you know. And then I did, instead of 212, I did 250. And like stupidly, insanely fast version of that song. I just like speeded up the original song and put the 250 metronome and I played it much much faster like just for fun you know but like uh and then and then there was like still a lot of shit talk in the comments after that like from between the fear fact fear fact between dino and some some people but like overall like i i really didn't mean to uh leave a, some kind of bad vibe or whatever because i really really like fear factory you know like uh i i love their music and the stuff the, the stuff they the music they wrote is was like a uh you know genre changing uh thing yeah, that yeah. happened in the it, world it, 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 stuff, yeah Yes, it, le it left a huge a mark. Rhythm guitarist, so yes, yes, sure. you know, and you can you can talk about skill, like, you know, think me playing that 250 BPM, whatever power shifter means honestly nothing because in the end, uh, like what really matters that like I'm there are so many people like me, you know, I'm just like a, a guy who plays fast technical stuff. So what like pe do people are going to remember me 50 years later? I don't think so, you know. Are people going to remember Fear Factory? I think so. You know, like it's like John Bonham, whatever. Like, you know, not the most technical guy, but they they defined hard rock music with Led oh, Zeppelin, yeah, whatever. So, definitely. so yeah, yeah. No, these are, we have to uh, take into consideration different qualities as a musician. It's not only about playing blast beats. You know, some are, somebody's going to say like, yeah, but can Lars Ulrich play 200? 50 bpm blast beats he doesn't need to you know he has he he has achieved so much more beyond that so and a lot of people don't realize that because you know playing extreme fast stuff is entertaining it's fun it's fun to watch but you know as uh, as exciting as it is it fades out very very quickly yeah, you know so like i can i can watch a guy i can watch a guy who's done doing like 300 bpm stuff for 30 seconds and then if he continues doing it i said like okay hello and i yeah. go you know yeah so and that that's that's the whole thing so yeah there, there were like a lot of really good solid points that dino made about like pure factory their music and stuff and honestly it was really cool so i'm, I'm really thankful for that whole thing i really hope i didn't hurt anyone so i personally did that only out of respect and yeah. and that's it so it was it was fun i hope it didn't turn the wrong way out. Yeah. Of course. So. Uh, so we've got some questions already. Yep. Okay. So let's start with uh, one of the first ones from the Instagram because they are from yesterday. And uh, the question yesterday. is, which band is or which bands are your biggest inspiration? And I think it, we can all answer that personally. Okay. Okay. Uh, is, is that question for me yeah. or for, for everyone? For everyone, but you can start. Number one, Vain. <laughs> <laughs> okay correct answer yeah, yeah uh, good well uh, for, number two yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> number two vein again <laughs> uh, well the thing is uh for um i i i think you know as the, the extreme drummer that i am i yeah. have uh, like i have different kind of uh, drummers who inspired me to play the music that I play now. That would be uh, Derek Roddy, that would be George Collias from Nile, that would be Tim Young, that would be uh, Karim, Krim Klechner from Septic Flesh, also decapitated. And uh, yeah, probably those are the four that I always name if somebody asks me. Uh, when it comes to music, uh, like death metal, I'd say Behemoth a lot, uh, Morbid Angel, Dayside, um, Sepultura. I love Igor's playing, and also like Eli, the current drummer, is he's an in, in yeah. insane, insane beast. Yeah, with that when it comes to playing what I play, also Decapitated is like one of my biggest influences when it comes to death metal drumming, of course. Yeah. Yeah. So um, 
I think I would say Gojira, uh, Machine Hat, the Wheel Driver, uh, this kind of this kind of uh, uh, stuff. You mentioned Igor. Uh, Igor is is crazy. <laughs> I love that. Um, I also uh, try to inspire myself listening to diff other kinds of music, not only you know metal, but it's um, it's, it's not like on daily basis. So yeah, that's well, that's basically it. I think. For me, it's um, well. It used to be way different, but right now, the 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 music that like inspires me the most is bands like um, uh, well, Devil Driver, of course, uh, Lamb of God. Uh, the last decapitated album for me is amazing. It, it's finally, I mean, uh, I think finally the technical aspect is not in the way of the music being enjoyable in 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 this band's career. I love the guys. I lo I love all the albums, but but the 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 last one is the Kill the Cult album is, is just amazing for me, music, and I really, really like it. Um, yeah. And, uh, and, and yeah, it, it's the kind of stuff I listen to. I also, Mateusz showed me Igor, and uh, at first like I was, what the fuck is this? But uh, then I started listening to it more and more because I've, I've there, there's like a certain, um, it, it, you know, entry barrier with this music because it's just weird. It's 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 difficult to listen to at first. You have to get used to it. But once you do, you 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 can really discover a lot inside of it. And it's very creative, very um, innovative approach towards metal. I also really like Devin Townsend because he's like a, he's an amazing musician, an amazing songwriter, and he's very talented both guitar wise and vocally. So it's always a joy to listen to as well. Oh, yeah. So that that would be that for me. <clears throat> and um, if you oh that's a, that's a good question actually. If you weren't musicians, what would you guys be doing? This is the question, and oh, it's also for everyone. So once again, you can start, Eugene. I would love to uh, be a voice actor. All right. I'd love love to do voice for literally anything, games, cartoons, anime, whatever you name it. I I'm I'm very very fascinated with talented voice actors who are like able to uh, impersonate somebody else only with their voice. You know, like, yeah, like nothing you cannot see anything. Example. Oh yeah, yeah, that you guy is me. like, you know, th 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 very very funny that you brought him up because uh, by any chance you've seen that movie, A Million Ways to Die in the West yeah. or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Where, where he's like stars as the main character yeah. he in my opinion he should just stay with voice acting because like as an actor like oh he my sucks. god it's he sucks no, he sucks, no. He, he's, but he's, sucks he's big a, time amazing as a, as a voice actor yeah. but yeah yeah really 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 cool yeah all right um how about uh, you Mateusz? what would you be doing if you weren't a musician I am not a musician. <laughs> <laughs> then what are you doing now? <laughs> yeah, if you if you weren't playing in a band, you know. Uh, yeah. So actually, I I I am a manager in IT company. So I I was I, I was like for professionally for like ten years a software developer, coding Java. Um, you do. Yeah, 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 yeah. I still, I still kind of study because because of the music. I'm, I slowed down my my study, but I'm, I'm still studying as an IT guy. I don't remember really? anything, but still, yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't know that. That's good. I knew. Uh, so yeah, so so ten years uh, coding. Then I think it's like seventh year of being a full time manager in uh, uh, in the IT company. So yeah, it's, uh, that's pretty much it. So I was I. If if I wasn't playing a guitar, I would probably continue doing what I what I am, what I am actually doing. So it's um, and I'll probably have much much more time, what to you know to play games and <laughs> spend time with my family, <laughs> watch movies. Uh, now I spend most of my time of spare time uh, doing doing stuff for for Vain. So yeah, that I would probably have just much more spare it's time. It's a very yeah, but it's cool then. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. Like right, right, right now that like right now you're probably still kind of doing pretty good. I mean, like work-wise in the current situation in the world because of the IT. I mean, like of course every everybody yeah. is affected, but IT is like I, my my brother. I got an older brother, and he's an IT guy, 
and literally nothing has changed for him for the past two months so he's just working from home that's it exactly <laughs> so so the, the only difference is that i work from 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 home that's it mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that's well, that's for, correct for me the answer is very similar as mateus because i'm not an it guy but i'm a photographer and videographer and i'll do occasional graphic design and stuff like this so i probably would focus on that if i wasn't playing in a band and uh, yeah because it's my passion and i really love doing that so it's, you know uh, and I'm, I'm very fortunate to be able to combine these passions i mean music and photography in vain because I'm, I'm doing a lot of uh, like all the promotional photo shoots and uh, all the videos and everything so it's it's kind of cool to be able to do that even like even yeah. right now on the stupid stream i'm you know i've lit myself with professional lights and everything just you know just because i like it so yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I'm coding <laughs> on, on the side. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> cool. yeah, all right. Um, uh, what else? Uh, do we have any questions from the Facebook? We have somebody saying chip chirip chi death metal. <laughs> Is that who bad? <laughs> That is Artur. Uh, oh, okay. Jan Krzysztof Śniadecki is asking you, ah, Jenek, kiedy Krzysztof. zapiekanka? Zapiekanka, I, I had, zapiekanka is all here and I have to quit zapiekanka for a little bit because it's, I'm, uh, the, the, my, my scales are gonna, are gonna break down under my weight soon. So for now, like I need, I need to put zapiekanka on hold as, as much as I hate it, but still, you know, when I come back to Poland, for sure. <laughs> Maybe Mateusz can go for Zapikanka. I should stop, really. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. I. Okay, I, I, I just remembered I need something important to do. <laughs> 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 and uh, I have a final question from the Instagram. Do you like dance music? <laughs> uh, I, I, I don't think I really listen to dance music. I, I, did, I did dance in the past like as okay. as, a, as a sport yeah yeah it's like the ballroom dancing is a very very tough sport that that i've been doing for very metal i think well. all yeah i think <laughs> almost eight years or something okay. from the age of seven to 15. yeah it was like it's very tough so like this is not some cheap cheap dancing you know it's like it's a very very tough sports where, where you go to competitions and championships and stuff and actually like right now that i live in vienna the first time i visited vienna was at the dancing competition 2005 i think so and um it's very it, you know like the, the thing that i'm very very um grateful for to dancing is that it taught me like a lot of discipline we we had like it was kind of a army like the military service for kids because right. like uh, there were like so many times when i was crying and i said like fuck this i don't want to do it i want to die and it was terrible honestly and and uh, you know but i was still very very little and uh, my parents were kind of like pushing me like oh maybe you can still go on for another five years no and then like finally i think I, I quit and that's it so yeah no dance music uh yeah but dancing yeah it's my past dark past so dark, so to yeah. say <laughs> yeah dark secret from the past and Mateus, yeah do you not... know dance music well i know you do too. <laughs> yeah uh it's, this no. is how we <laughs> our secret <laughs> You met yeah. on the dance floor. So, yeah. Are you mentioning Witch King? It wasn't really dance music. <laughs> <laughs> I need to tell okay. you that. We've got we've got a huge question from Facebook to Eugene. If decapitated are your influence and you play with them and other Polish metal bands like Vane, why you don't speak in Polish? Do you regret that you're not Polish and think uh -oh. about rename from Eugene to Eugeniusz? Learn yeah, Polish like... language, eat some Polish dumplings, schnitzel, and drink vodka to deserve to play with Polish metalheads. <laughs> <laughs> Not schnitzel, but schabowy. Schabowy, dokładnie. Schabowy, of course, dokładnie. No, the, I... Uh, maybe yeah, we, we'll, we can switch to Polish. What do you think? 
No, no that's a bad idea. Vitam kolegu, Czemu? jestem Gianek. Okay. I, I don't, I, it's, uh, you know, like how it is with languages. I'm, I'm lucky enough to uh, speak Russian, Ukrainian, Hungarian, English, and I do understand a lot of Polish, especially because I got to spend a lot of time with Polish musicians. So like, yeah, of course, curse words come first, but then like other kind of, you know, terms in music, you know, uh, like new stuff that bands talk about. And not only Vuda, you know. So and yeah, that, that's 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 a thing that I I like to have like Polish people around, musicians, and they need to be careful because I do understand almost everything they talk about. So, but I, I do. So you know, that's that's like I I I do believe if I would spend you know some time, I would like put put some effort in that I could learn Polish pretty fast because it's of course a Slavic language. So and it's yeah. somewhere but it just, between you know like Ukrainian is somewhere between Polish and Russian. So you Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Of course, of course. Of course. Do you, so, do you remember uh, any any funny situation when someone was talking Polish some shit about you and <laughs> <laughs> no, no, that that never happened. Like, I mean, nothing very negative or something that I heard about. But, uh, but when when okay, and I'm gonna say something very offensive to you guys. So, like in general to Polish people, when they speak, I think it's funny. So <laughs> that's all. That, <laughs> the, the the language itself sounds funny to me. You know, so <laughs> well, yeah. just like Czech sounds funny to us. So well, we kind of yeah. understand what you mean. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's the same. Like it's a lot of. Uh, you know because they're like similar but uh, it's like uh some would say you know uh, the thing is like where i come from uh from ukraine i was born in a in a very small uh, town in a western region of ukraine it is next to the border with slovakia poland uh, hungary and romania so we got all sorts of like a mixture of different cultures and uh, our specific region has a very very weird and funny dialect of ukrainian which mixes a lot of words from the neighboring countries mm -hmm. and so the thing is like i am having an easier time to understand polish or czech than other people from ukraine from other regions because right. because i'm i already hear fam like familiar words and to me it sounds like like the polish for example is an improved uh, local dialect that we used or or right. like our is the handicapped polish or handicapped czech or handicapped hungarian so to say which is like uh, you're talking ukrainian uh, you're speaking ukrainian but you're like every once in a while occasionally use uh, some polish words some hungarian words and like it's very very funny and that's why we have like for example i think slovak is probably the easiest for us to understand i think so it's like very very similar to our local dialect so many many similar words and like i like this i was like always this village kid you know and then i like i i moved we moved to a bigger town and it was a bit weird because like everybody knew that i was the village kid and i had to change a bit my ukrainian to adapt the the the, the normal people and then i went to slovakia for the first time in my life many years ago and people talk that village language there and i like and i cannot stop laughing because it's so funny that's why even polish is so funny to me these days you know because it's so similar to to our peasant language in there okay <laughs> understood um and uh uh, while we're uh, on the topic of Polish and, and Poland and bands, what are your musical plans for your future? Because you have just released uh, an album with Punisher a few oh, weeks true. ago. Yeah. And, In February, uh, actually. Yeah, end of February. <laughs> Krzysiek Śniadecki asks you to say, your face is krzywo. Yeah, your face is Krzysztof. <laughs> yeah, that that's his that's his favorite favorite moment. It's like yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that that was funny. <laughs> uh, yeah, we, we we did we did record the album in Bydgoszcz, uh, 2018, and then it was released just now end of February. Uh, the thing is, we worked for a very long time with that like for on that album because I did the drums like one and a half years ago then then we did the guitars then the vocals a bit later then then we had all sorts of things we had to face like artwork and and uh distribution and all that you know all that stuff you yeah, you, you yeah. know about that more than than i do so i'm like not 
oh, I'm almost never involved in these in the, in the business side, you know. So and uh, and that's why yeah. Then it was released later. We were supposed to I think release it. If, uh, first we were supposed to release it in 2019, like end of the year or something, and then we postponed it to next year. I don't remember. Yeah, but but it was really cool because like it's been a while since since I did a decent like recording in the studio uh and uh, like our my my experience in for that recording with banisher in uh in bitgush with uh, shimon and van sound studio was like uh it was really cool very very smooth and easy like it was like the, the stuff that we played the music that i had to play for that album was like tough it was challenging yeah we saw it complicated on the, because we saw it was it like the video from the studio <laughs> yeah 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 and and there were like a lot of things that were really really hard you know th that's the older banisher it's like actually it's faster and more technical but that's why it's simpler because it's all the same and then the new banisher that we did it's like it's a roller coaster it has a yeah, lot of very level. very yeah, simple yeah, yeah, things yeah. and then you have to change the style to play 260 blast beats that's actually a problem i'm also facing partially with flash god because like they used to play fast stuff only fast stuff and now they play a lot of slow stuff and that's a problem now that's a problem because they still play the fast stuff and also the slow stuff and then you have to be this kind of unique uh, like uh, uh jack of all yeah. trades guy you know that's yeah. very hard so and uh, yeah with banisher so and i was like very very concerned about like how can i pull this off this is going to be tough but that experience in the studio was really really cool i remember we we had i think four days to do eight songs and I've done everything almost in two. So I did seven songs in two days and one song on the third day. And then we left one day sooner. We left one day sooner and we got a flat tire. That's karma, bitch. <laughs> so, yeah. All right. Yeah. And I almost missed my bus. <laughs> yeah. But that is just released, right? And uh, what about yeah. the, the things that you have cooking? For the future uh, Can you tell gigs us like or? like shows that that's the thing you know like we now i don't want to be like a very pessimistic guy no, but you, you know now, but, show, speaking about shows is obviously it's like nobody yeah. can tell because the coronavirus situation can go on for god knows how yeah long. so it's, it's yeah unfortunately it's basically just fortune telling right now but i i, I meant Mm, uh, release wise are you working on something new on some new material with any of your projects or maybe some drum lessons or something like this uh no like uh you know i'm right now in vienna and i'm not really i record a lot of stuff most of the stuff that i do record uh for my own mm, social media profile is uh, at home in ukraine in yeah, Ushka, I where i do like I, I play drums there and uh so like right now i'm here in vienna and uh, uh i don't really have a access to a proper drum kit i do have a rehearsal space here that i go there sometimes just to you know remember like recall how to play drums and stuff and I, i'm i'm gonna go to the studio in actually in two days uh, so on thursday and i'm gonna spend like two days i'm gonna record a lot of stuff i'm gonna record a lot of videos um i'm gonna do uh, like some video playthroughs uh we're gonna uh, some some of the guys if if, if you're familiar with the You've been watching lately the, the Flash God Apocalypse news. Uh, they've been posting some like playthroughs, and yeah, it's not a secret anymore that I'm gonna also gonna do some Flash God Apocalypse videos where I'm gonna be performing some of their older stuff, of course. Um, and uh, so, like, I've been I've been practicing now for for that in in the past few days. And uh, yeah, it's it's gonna be tough. It's gonna be tough, but I'm I'm also excited because like at least I got to do something. You know, <laughs> the, the problem is I don't have my gear here with me, mm -hmm. and uh, like partially, uh, I asked the 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 Flash God guys to ship something from Italy because I left all my stuff there after the last show in February, yeah. and they shipped shipped some of the gear here, and, and now at least I have my pedal symbol, so I can do at least something. So yeah, I'm going to be hitting the studio the day after tomorrow, recording a couple of videos, and I think the first one is going to be like maybe in three, two, three weeks from now, it's going to be posted by the Flash God guys, so I, I hope it was not some kind of classified info, but now it's not anymore. <laughs> all right, all right, and you guys, you guys had to cancel your tour, right? Yeah, it was postponed. 
postponed. Yeah. yeah, well, it was like they moved it. Yeah, we were um, we were supposed to do like a very huge thing, uh, U.S. tour, March April. It was to I think 20, 20 gigs or something with a string quartet. So it was like it's a big deal. We were supposed to be like ten people on stage every night so 10 people and it's like six uh og musicians and like uh four uh, four other string musicians uh and uh that the, like it was like the guys were preparing for it for like a year they were very very stressed you know so much money time and effort put into that but then like it was uh it, it like we saw that there's like no way it's gonna happen so they moved all the dates for later and they were like rebooking it. And uh, right now, I I don't you like in if you want to know more information about that, you'd rather like check out the Flash God right, news and yeah, ask just, them. Just wanted, just wanted, you know, rather to to know your perspective. It's not like you know, I want. Yeah. To yeah, it's a it. shame. I'm More I'm I was really bummed about it. For example. Yeah, I, I was I was honestly upset because uh, we were we were supposed to start with like a festival in Mexico and then. Yeah continue with the tour in the u.s and it was supposed to be my first big tour with flash god mm -hmm. because we did uh we did six gigs in the uk and that's it for now that we did them in february and that was the last thing that i've done and then this big u.s tour was uh, supposed to happen and there was like so much pressure on me and i was like very very excited about this because the the venues that were booked for those tours for that tour were like insanely cool you know those were the house of blues almost in every city uh, and those are those big ass theaters with like thousands of people want, you want to play in, in the states I yeah know. yeah yeah and and then and that's it so like i was very i was really upset when they told me like oh yeah bad news we're not gonna do it now so i was very very upset so. and but Question. honestly honestly yep yeah. uh what was most more stressful for you uh first flash god uh, geek or our uh, geek on vacuum <laughs> probably the vacuum gig because i was so unprepared and i like i i didn't know what was going on you know so i yeah the, we, for the flash god gig i was i was learning the set for one and a half months they also had 12 songs i think which is overall like overall one hour and no, not 12 songs more. I don't remember how many, but more and long, longer set. But I had much more time. So, and uh, yeah, no, you, the stuff we had was extreme. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but it was extreme for us too. Yeah, but I'm glad. That was done. cool. Yeah, because like in the end, it turned out to be such a cool adventure, like a picnic at Vaken. You know, like I'm, I'm very thankful for the uh, Parkway Drive discovery. I never listened to them, and then you forced me to watch them twice. <laughs> first, <laughs> first at Woodstock, because like I was, I was honestly so tired, and I said like, "Can we go to sleep?" And they're like, "Yeah, like, we came here for Woodstock to watch Parkway Drive. We cannot leave." And then yeah, so we had to stay and watch them, and it was awesome. I was awesome. loved yeah, it. Yeah. I I even became a fan. And then and then we watched them on Vakan the second time. So cool. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. It, it was. It turned out really good, and the 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 the, the gig was just amazing. They are a killer the show. Live band. The, the show, show is show, insane. Yeah. They 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 grown so much. They, they are they are almost album perfect uh, yeah. live when it comes to you know to, to, to performance it's it's just breathtaking amazing i played uh, i played a festival in romania in 2000 i think 15 or 16 i'm not sure and they were headlining there as well and it was like only like three or four years before that and it was like a underground band <laughs> in comparison to what they were yeah. Yeah, last yeah. year they, they blew so. up like recently two two three years ago. Yeah. yeah 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 cool all right we've got a question uh from the from facebook uh, mirak is asking if the last poll behind me is the same one that i lent to percival schuttenbach to record lesser evil album yes it's the same guitar it's uh it's my trusty old les paul which uh, i love dearly uh, but I will probably sell because I don't play it anymore. Uh, I've moved to a bit more um, modern guitars, as you can tell. Uh, but yeah, it's 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 the exact same instrument that I gave the guys to play, and uh, it's a, it's a very it has a very like big sentimental value for me. 
this one. All righty. Yeah. Do you have any more questions, Robert? No, I have no board. more questions from the Instagram. Or, uh, um, maybe just give me a second. I'll check if something popped. But uh, I, I don't think so. But uh, just give me a second. Uh, Eugene, maybe you have some questions, you know, for us, so that to we, you, yeah, yeah, yeah guys. Well, what about what about you? Have you? Uh, could you tell me just like very briefly because I, I've uh, I've watched the news, of course. Of you, you've been uh, also, of course, affected by the the whole situation, and you were like literally also on tour, right? You moved yeah. the dates, you canceled stuff. So, like, how did that go for you? Because like I was one of those. Like probably few bands that I was at home when the whole thing happened, and we kind of already anticipated that uh, it's not worth going because we're gonna go back home anyway. And a lot of band got a lot of bands got stuck in the middle of nowhere and couldn't get home. Like when when like the decapitated guys, they were uh, I think yeah. in Germany when it happened, and they were getting back to Poland for like I think a few days or maybe like yeah, one two days that they they border, could. Same yeah. Oh, really? Okay. Same thing with Batyushka, yeah. It, 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 it what about really you? Sucks. Well, uh, Mateusz, I'll let yeah. you answer this so, because we've been talking with Gienek all the time, so it's your turn now. <laughs> Cool. So yeah, we were in the middle of our weekend tour. Uh, so it, uh, so they our shows were cancelled uh, in the middle of the week. So it wasn't like a big deal. Besides, it was it was all uh, every kind of kind of weekend was in in Poland. Uh, or the next weekend was in Poland. So it wasn't a uh, you know a big deal for us in terms of traveling or something. But um, yeah, it was uh, the, our our headline show was cut in in half basically so we we played four gigs and four gigs were postponed hopefully we'll play them them in september unfortunately though those four gigs that that uh that uh, were cancelled or postponed uh were supposed to be the best of the you know it was like uh we i was i was watching the the pre-sales and it uh, look it looked like it's going to be it's going to be awesome it was awesome for the first half so if if it was so awesome for the first half it is going to be even more awesome uh, uh, uh on the rest of the tour yeah and it was i remember one of the uh, one of the moira guys we we are co-headlining with them um and he he like a week before he said something like yeah, but you know, you, you you need to be careful with planning because who knows? We may be those shows may be cancelled because coronavirus. And it was like, no, come on, it, it won't happen to us. Come on, <laughs> we're in Poland, it's far away. Oh, yeah. Yeah, far away. <laughs> um, China's uh, it's materialized. Away. Yeah, so we were also supposed to to play in Czech Republic uh, the uh, another weekend after one weekend after after our tour, and yeah, it was all kind of. It, it wasn't easy for us, but it's um, yeah. I've, I think well, it's it's it wasn't so much big deal for us than for uh, let's say decapitated or bands like that because our investments in in relationship to those bands is like it's, it's relatively small, right? So so I wasn't crying too loud, <laughs> so to say. Yeah, but it's <laughs> it was, you know, to get your tour cancelled and. Uh, all the promotional materials that we really worked our asses off on and then the promotion and everything it, you know we, we'll have to do that again so yeah. this is always uh, problematic yeah, it's a bummer. It, it's, you know it's a lot of work that people just don't see it, it's not just about the concerts you don't play and the merch you don't sell the tickets you don't sell it's about all the promotional work you do that uh, it you know goes unseen and uh, it's when it comes to bands like us, the, the, the caliber of bands that Vein is, it's always all done internally. So it's, you know, our hard work that just went to shit. But such is life. And well, what we can do is just hope that uh, we can play these shows uh, in the autumn and that, you know, they will turn out fine. And that that's what we're keeping, keeping our fingers crossed for, you know, so that this all and that blows over. Uh, by 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 the time the autumn comes. 
what's the situation right now actually in Poland with the with the restrictions on you know like working and socializing whatever because in Austria I think this today's a Tuesday yeah I think starting from yesterday like a lot of people went back to work actually so like the the restrictions are getting softer in Poland it's a similar thing however uh, we're still obliged to wear the face mask all, at all times when outside. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, the bigger gatherings are discouraged, but, but they're yeah. trying to bring back normal, sort of normal life because we're, uh, it's going to be elections soon. And, you know, they mm -hmm. want those elections to happen. The politicians want oh, to yeah, of course. And so they will, of course, do everything they can to, to you know, to, to make it seem like it's safe to go outside. Is it really safe? I guess we'll see. Yeah, it's yeah. uh, you know, like the 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 running gag lately among musicians uh, with uh, uh, forbidding uh, large gatherings. Yeah. No worries, underground shows will always happen because you know, under fifty yeah. people, it's gonna be okay. <laughs> we we'll always have sold out shows. <laughs> Don't worry. <laughs> That's true. That's true. <laughs> That is actually true. All right, I think you Sad. know we, we we've got no more questions. Um, yeah, so 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 we can actually wrap it up. Thanks for joining us, Eugene. It's always thanks, thanks a for having me. Yeah, of course, it's always a blast hanging out with you. I can't wait for the next time you're in Poland so we can go for Pashibus. That's gonna be ah uh, yeah, Pashibus, Pashibus burgers. That's gonna be a spontaneous visit. Just like right. I'm just yeah. gonna drop like one one you know at night and say like okay guys whatever <laughs> let's do some crazy stuff <laughs> that would be course. cool yeah yeah so just let us know when you're coming and we'll hang out sure all right yeah i'd love to all righty all right so thanks so, for everything take care guys yeah take See care ya. stay safe cheers bye bye bye, -bye.